People using FinOps seem to be getting more wrong than right. Let's talk about it. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we explore the ins and outs of cloud computing without the agenda or falling into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works and what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and informative way. So please like and subscribe, check us out, tell a friend, comment below. So first, just uh, nothing to do with the topic at hand, but uh, the channel's growing. We're about to hit 150,000 subscribers. Great growth. Uh, It'll be a year old, I believe, in uh, February or March. I can't remember when I, when I had the idea to start this channel. Uh, but that's all due to you guys. You guys appreciate the fact that there's a show out there that uh, you know doesn't get into the narratives that are being dictated by the large marketing budgets out there and looks at the reality of this technology, including cloud computing and how it works with AI and other technologies, the value of multi-cloud, the value of cloud ops, the value of FinOps, which we're going to discuss today. And so I appreciate your, you trusting me for teaching you how to uh, understand cloud computing. I'll continue the work. So I got to be a bit careful here because I did uh, post an article and I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen now. It's also referenced in the, uh, in the notes below on uh, FinOps and some of the issues that I'm finding as people are practicing FinOps out there. And the reason why I have to be careful is because I think there's kind of two camps here. I think that the the issue is coming from folks that are practicing FinOps, normally from the uh, big consulting organizations and sometimes within the enterprises themselves by the folks who are dealing with architecture and may have a FinOps title on their name, things like that. And I think they're misapplying some of the concepts that the FinOps community is teaching right now. And certainly the FinOps organization, and there's a whole organization that's dedicated to understanding and the discipline and creating methods around cloud FinOps and how to you know, get that right. And I think that's all well and good. And I think those people are extremely valuable to have around. My issue is, and what we're gonna get into the discussion here is that it's being practiced incorrectly and misapplied in many instances. And I think that uh, we have to kind of call it out because I think there's more misapplication of FinOps techniques out there than people who are practicing it correctly. And this is ending up as a disaster for many enterprises because they have false metrics. They're moving toward a value, a measure of value that's just not correct. And ultimately, they're getting to the end state of the cloud migration projects, cloud development projects, whatever they're doing. And they're finding that uh, they're not meeting the value expectations they originally thought they would have. So first, not everybody knows what FinOps is. Cloud FinOps specifically and that's fine. And I'll go ahead and define it here. Uh, FinOps or financial operations is a set of practices and cultural philosophies that organizations adopt to manage financial management effectively. Uh, it bridges the gap between finance, engineering, and business teams, enabling better visibility and accountability into cloud spending by integrating financial considerations in the cloud decision-making processes. And they also deal with optimization of cost, forecast expenses, and drive value from their cloud investments. You can take a look at it. Certainly go out to finops.org and see what they have. There's lots of great books uh, out on FinOps. I recommend the one from O'Reilly if you're going to get into this uh, a bit deeper. Also, I have a course on FinOps out on LinkedIn Learning. Please check that out, and I'll, lay, uh, I'll put it in the description below. And then I wrote, wrote some white papers on, on FinOps. Uh, also, FinOps is covered... Uh, in my book, A Cloud Computing Insider, it's not a FinOps book. We, we do get into, you know, some of the realities I'm talking to you about here. And then I just wrote an article for InfoWorld on this very topic unto itself. And I rarely kind of pivot topics I'm writing about in InfoWorld here. But in this case, I made an exception just kind of based on the fact I see it to be something that's very important that we need to discuss. So core to the issue that I have here with the way FinOps is being practiced by many organizations is the notion of cloud units, which is a, a FinOps term. Uh, evidently, it's being promoted as a FinOps term by people who are leveraging it. And the idea is, is fairly uh, sound. In other words, cloud units are there to standardize measurement to design normalized cloud costs across different services and workloads. And ultimately, you, uh, the way they describe it, you can think of them as cloud equivalent to MPG or miles per gallon for cars and a way to compare efficiency across different models. And they typically represent a cost per transaction, user, compute hour, 
and FinOps teams introduced them to bring consistency to cloud cost management. And so what's happening now, and I'm seeing papers starting to emerge and articles that are coming out of some of the big consulting firms where they're promoting the idea of cloud units as a way to normalize accountability or understanding how cloud costs are being consumed consumed across different resources in the cloud. And so the idea, like I said, MPG miles per gallon, and ultimately it's a good idea per se, but I think it kind of goes off the rails and we'll see why. So the promise was the initial um, way to translate complex cloud spending into simple business terms and some, something that CFOs can understand. And so if I find there's a huge chasm between the way CFOs understand cloud costs and how architects, uh, cloud architects understand cloud costs. And this may be uh, created as a way to do that. And uh, they can benchmark performance across departments and promise, you know, ultimately the ability to standardize clarity uh, to cloud economics. So this was created for a good purpose. In other words, it was there to normalize or basically come up with a standard in how we're going to look at cloud costs or, or cloud cost consumption or spending uh, that occurs across different cloud spending scenarios. At least that's the idea. So what could go wrong? Well, a lot, <laughs> as I'm finding out, as I'm managing these projects and, and doing project audits, I'm coming in behind some of these organizations looking at, uh, with a skeptical eye, the way in which they did some of the accounting systems, the business case analysis, things like that, and even how they picked, uh, made their architectural selections, different cloud providers, different cloud services, to come up with, with what they thought was going to be an optimized architecture, which is going to bring the more value back to the business. But again, I think that in some instances, using these cloud units as a single source of measurement, which I'm finding many of these organizations are doing, you know, pushing the fact that, well, FinOps is pushing this, so therefore we're going to push it and still come up with some very, very, very wrong answers. So the problem is complexity of this stuff. Modern cloud environments are more like ecosystems than machines. They're very difficult to create standard cost measurements across them. And so they involve thousands of interconnected services, uh, complex dependencies that occur, different ways that the costs are being allocated. And it's very difficult to put a single static metric on something that is so complex and dynamic. Also, you have to remember that we're measuring value return here. In other words, if I'm spending $10, but I'm getting $100 back, that may be a good investment. And so if I'm just looking at the $10 that I'm spending without understanding the value that's coming back to the business and doing the calculations and the hard work to determine that, I'm not really accessing the value of cloud computing based on the cost that I'm spending. So if you're trying to reduce this down to a single metric, like trying to measure you know, a city's health by only counting its population, you're not necessarily going to get useful information. In fact, I would say it's worse because in many cases, people are making decisions, companies are making decisions in utilizing cloud-based resources based on this metric, which turns out to be a false, incorrect metric. And they're only looking at a single dimension and not necessarily what cloud computing value is. Many different dimensions, uh, many different values, certainly agility, the ability to uh, scale on demand, the ability to provision on demand, all these things that bring business value that are very difficult to to, uh, to calculate. That was what I called it in the book. I, talk, I talked about the hard values versus the soft values. In other words, hard values are easy to figure out. In other words, it's the amount of cost savings that's coming from us spending uh, money on a cloud resource. Um, and we can figure that out pretty easily. But the, but the soft values are the hard things to figure out. The value of agility, the value of scalability, the value of uh, the ability to change things uh, around different market demands and different product line changes, things like that, which has a tremendous amount of value. In fact, if you're only looking at cloud cost savings, you know, versus traditional ways of doing computing, cloud's always going to be more expensive. It's never going to be the right cost choice uh, in those scenarios. And again, you have to look at the soft values that are very hard to determine. And that's where the value of cloud computing is. What I used to always tell my you know, clients, you can certainly, you know, go come to cloud for the cost savings, which you won't find in many instances, uh, but you're going to stay for the agility. And we're not measuring these soft values and using these cloud units. Now, that doesn't mean uh, it's not being done correctly. And one of the things I pointed out when I, or, or which was pointed out to me by uh, when I posted this Mike article on LinkedIn, I did get some good feedback on that, was a lot of the 
uh, academic pursuits and talks that were out there, which are considering uh, these value metrics. And so I'm not saying that the thinking's not out there. I'm asserting, um, you know, based on what I know about the industry right, and what I'm seeing, that that's not getting to the practitioners of FinOps. Uh, in other words, the big consulting companies, the enterprises aren't using these metrics effectively, and they're getting a false idea of the value that's going to come back to the business based on the use of cloud. And this is going to destroy them because they're going to make wrong decisions. So cloud investment often deliver value through improved agility, innovation, innovation, capacity, and competitive advantage. And so those are going to be hard to measure, and sometimes people refuse to measure them. But I think you have to figure out how to measure them, so have some sort of approach to figure out what that value is going to be in order to determine the true benefits of this. And so the benefits are invisible. Traditional client unit, uh, cloud unit metrics, they don't see them, they don't measure them, and therefore they're missing a larger part of the puzzle. That's how I'm stating the problem is now. So again, when organizations focus solely on, on one cost per unit uh, metric, they risk, uh, they risk optimizing for efficiency at the expense of strategic values. In other words, they're optimizing for cost efficiency in these instances, but not necessarily having an understanding of its effect on the strategic value that cloud computing is able to bring. So what kind of problems can this cause? Well, misleading metrics. You know, consider an e-commerce platform that reduces its cost per transaction, but sees customer satisfaction plummet uh, due to increased latency. So in other words, they're doing something to save money, um, but it's having an impact on the business that they really didn't see coming. So in other words, it was an unintended consequence of this. And I see this all the time. In other words, they're, they're, sa they're uh, saving a penny, uh, which ends up wasting a dollar. And I think that has to be brought out in light. So the metrics... You know, show success when while the business suffers, you're getting false positives or dangerous because they're moving after these cost saving metrics that they believe are something that's going to be good. But again, giving up lots of different business value uh, metrics in the light and don't understand it. In other words, they go, well, why is our business falling off? Why are is customer satisfaction rating go down? Why is employee morale down? Uh, because we're just saving money here. They didn't understand the impact of making these cost reduction changes based on the fact that they're using this, in many instances, misuse metric of cloud units. So strategic misalignment organizations, you know, might delay cr uh, critical infrastructure investment because it would increase their cloud unit costs, even though the investment would enable new revenue streams is another example. And the misalignment between metrics and strategy that ultimately can cripple innovation and growth. So I'm seeing companies out there that are moving out, moving toward this as their objective, and they're not understanding the holistic picture, and they're actually hurting their business. Uh, and there's a lot amount of large amount of organizations out there that are doing this, and they're led by some pretty smart people, smart people within the enterprises, certainly smart people in the consulting companies. They just need to rethink how they assess cloud value. And, and I hate to say it, but it's going to be much harder than you're doing it now. There's no simple formula. Uh, you're going to have to think about this as a model, as a strategy, as an approach. And we'll go over my ideas uh, later in the video. So what's a better approach, Dave? All right, smart guy, tell us what we should be doing. There's no easy direction here. I, I, we have to do things via bespoke metrics based on the problem domain we're looking at. All businesses are different. The way in which you measure value is going to be different based on the business. You know, I'm not a CFO. I'm not a... Uh, you know, business MBA, and but I, I can look at a business and figure out where the value uh, can be created quickly. And that's a much more of a deeper dive than just kind of understanding the IT infrastructure and look for ways in which we can save costs. Um, I think we're missing the mark there. So custom metrics can align directly with the business outcomes. You know, for example, a media streaming service might track cost per viewer minute alongside of quality of the experience metrics. So we have to do the quantitative, in other words, what we're saving, what we're spending, but also the value that's being brought back to the business. We're missing that aspect of it. For example, another thing would be a financial service company might measure transaction speed against regulatory compliance cost. And this tailored approach may provide, you know, better, more meaningful insights. And so what we're saying here is that this is going to be customized for each one of the domains. I know people don't like to hear that. They love um, 
algorithmic uh, formulas that can reuse across from problem domain to problem domain. I don't think those exist. We can certainly have a methodology and an approach for how we identify these problems. And I teach that in my architecture class. But I think it's always going to be different uh, based on what the business is. And so there, there's no one size fits all approach. There's no one single metric. And I understand it's going to create more work and create more uncertainty. And it's going to be more complex to explain. And obviously, you're going to have to get into the complexities of the business and you know have to talk to people and understand the business processes, the regulatory environments, uh, customer satisfaction surveys, how uh, revenue was built, how inventory, is wor inventory works, supply chain works. But without that information, you're not going to understand how to value uh, the value uh, that's coming back to the business from the use of cloud, cloud computing. So identify your critical business outcomes. In other words, why we're doing this. In other words, what does the business do and how do they define success? Then design the metrics that directly connect cloud spending to these outcomes. In other words, if we're going to spend money, uh, sometimes we're reducing money, we're increasing spend, but that's always going to come to how much value is being returned to the business, not just simply how much money we're saving uh, based on measuring uh, metrics that run may run across different cloud uh, cloud computing models and, and and business domains include efficiency measures and value creation indicators. Those have to be core to this. The goal is to create a balanced scorecard that reflects your unique business. I can't stress that enough. So this is uh, going to be hard, um, but I think it's worth it. I think as we're talking about billion dollars of valuation that many enterprises are going to be missing in the next few years because they're misaligning their utilization of technology, in this case cloud computing, with what they think are the correct, correct metrics when they're going after, uh, again, a false goal. So I hope this helped. Um, just to conclude, you know, this is moving beyond simple cloud units uh, to understanding Value drivers are going to allow you to make better decisions. And so organizations need to develop more sophisticated ways to measure cloud value. And it's going to take some thinking and it's going to take some additional work. Um, I see lots of papers out there that are doing case studies on utilization of cloud units and they're using them in an incorrect way. And so hopefully they'll see this video and start changing their thinking. Uh, even though it's very difficult uh, once these uh, large consulting organizations are shipping off in one direction and they put different white papers and articles in different uh, major publications uh, to change directions, but they're going to have to change directions. Uh, the shift required to effort to face a re resistance from those comfortable with the simpler metrics. And so they're promoting cloud units as a way that what you're doing. And I suspect I'm going to see a ton of this over the next few years. Uh, I'm going to correct as many as I see. And fortunately, people are listening to me when I correct them. But I think I can't be everywhere. And, um, you know, it's just one person. And I think the number of mistakes are going to be catastrophic for lots of these organizations. And they're going to wonder, you know, how they made these mistakes. This is how you made these mistakes. So the alternative is to continue making strategic decisions based on these oversimplifications of the business metrics. And again, this is going to be a huge risk. And it could jeopardize the business. You got to remember the strategic use of cloud-based resources, including AI that runs on cloud. All these things we've been moving to over the last 15 years. You got to get that right. And you have to get that right in an optimized way that's going to bring those value back to the business. That's why architects exist. They don't just exist to make all these cool technologies work and play well together. We represent the business. We're translating the business requirements into a technology configuration. That's what architects do. That, I'm an architect by trade, and I've been doing that for 30 some odd years. And so we have to get back into that mindset. Well, that's all I have this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my InfoWorld blog. Check out my LinkedIn learning courses, including my course on FinOps. Um, don't forget my book, Cloud Computing Insider. Uh, and also, um, you know, check out my course, I Don't Go Cloud Careers, where I'm doing a generative AI architecture course. It's going to be a fully mentored course. Uh, if you're looking to get into that as a career direction, you know, join us over there. We're getting to all the details, not just throwing a video at you. Uh, if you're more of a mentored, uh, mentored kind of a learner. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. Take care. Cheers.